Hello and welcome to the th third tutorial discussing Woodwind Instrument Designer software for designing woodwind musical instruments. I'm Edward Court and today we'll discuss the user interface um, and all the bells and whistles and involved in this user interface. We'll talk about length ty type and how to set it for all of your data, um, the study panel and how its selection rules, how to do data entry, toolbar manipulations, tool tips, selecting, docking, floating, and all the other things that you can do with frames, renaming, data frames, warning on dirty clothes, clearing the console, uh, optimizing and tuning dialogues, and printing and undo. So without further ado, let's bring up the application. So here is Woodwind Instrument Designer with no files open. Let's go into the options pane and see that the length type can be any of millimeters, centimeters, meters, inches, or feet. So whichever one you're comfortable with, the program will use those as the length unit of measure and convert between them. So um, I'm in the United States. We're still in the, quote, English system, and I tend to use inches. So let's bring up a file and see how all of this works. And the same files that we had before. Let's bring up an instrument with a three-quarter inch bore. And you can see here that its dimensions are in unit in, in inches. Um, all of the dimensional numbers are inches. There are some non-dimensional numbers. Fipple factor is a ratio. Um, that's about it on, on this one uh, that is dimensionless. Let's go into the options again and let's change our unit of measure. Probably another popular one is millimeters. So let's see okay. Um, you'll notice nothing has changed here. The units of measure for a file are only set when you open it. But there's some, some tricks to doing this. There's the underlying data for this is XML. And we can view that XML um, with some care. And that's called toggle view. You can also find that under the, the Windows menu, toggle data view. Notice that when I went, I essentially reloaded this view it's now millimeters and all of these dimensions have been converted to millimeters. The FIPPLE factor, which was a ratio, hasn't been touched. Um, so you can on the fly change whichever length dimension you like. Notice that our save um, tool button has been activated. That's because the underlying XML for instrument um, has a length type as part of its definition so that all the values you see in here are in that unit of measure. As a result, when we, when we changed to millimeters, we changed all those values. The program rightly said Oh, that's, that's a file change. Do you want to save it with that file change? You can or you can't. Um, it doesn't make any difference to the program. This facilitates you receiving files from somebody who has used one length measure and you're comfortable with using a different length measure. Uh, you can do the save at that point and it's in your preferred unit of measure. Um, that length measure applies to instruments and it also applies to constraints. 
Here you can see I, I opened this constraint up with the unit of measure millimeters and it came up um, and explicitly told you which were dimensionless um, properties and which were length time properties and put them in in millimeters. Again, just like the, the instrument file that we brought up, if we change the unit of measure, it won't be reflected in the file that's already open. So we'll go back to inches. This is still inches. Um, now watch closely. We're gonna, we're gonna throw a curveball at you. The, the save dialog box is not active now. I'm going to flip to XML and then back. We're now to inches. That save dialog box is still, the save tool button is still not active. Um, that's not a bug in the program. That's what we in, in the development community call function as designed. And the reason for that is, if we go back to this XML file, there is no indication anywhere in this file that what the the length type is and the numbers didn't change as we went back and forth the constraints file is always kept in units of meter and it's only when we bring up a pretty view that it's converted just for your view the underlying file still stays in meters and so there's no need to do a save uh, we did not envisage that you would pass around constraint files like like you will pass around instrument and tuning files okay so that covers in gory detail the the length type parameter the second item we're going to talk about is study panel selection rules. And what that means is that for the tool menu, everything that is acted upon in this tool menu, except for a minor exception, which I'll talk about, um, is based upon what is selected in the study panel over here, not what is selected over here in the data data view pane. So let me let me prove that to you. I'm going to bring up another instrument. So now we have an instrument with a seven eighths inch bore and an instrument with oh, let's convert that back to inches. with a three-quarter inch bore and I have the seven ace of the three-quarter inch bore selected in the in the data data view pane and the seven ace selected over here in the study pane so let's use a tool menu we can sketch an instrument and if we look at this it says it's showing us the 7 8 inch bore, which is the one that's selected in the study. So keep that in mind. You'll, if you're at all like me, will often uh, say, okay, I've selected this guy over here. That's what I'm acting on, uh, especially when you do optimization runs. And you'll surprise yourself that, nope, that's not the answer I expected and then look in the study pane and yes you didn't have the right file selected so um, however in on the other side of the coin things that are acted upon in the window under the windows menu like rename toggle data view um, selecting different um, different pane da data panes um, they all act on this view on the right side. Okay, a little confusing, but uh, the study pane has to act on a number of items. It has to act on an instrument, a tuning, an optimizer, and a set of constraints with that optimizer. Um, the right pane only acts on one object. Now, I, I promised I would talk about where the study pane and the tool menu don't rule and that is in the menu item 
under tools that is compare instruments. So compare instruments are go is going to compare all the dimensions and values for an instrument selected in the study pane and a different instrument selected over in the data pane. So notice here that I have the the 7 8 inch bore selected in the study and the 3 quarter inch bore selected in the data pane. This tool button is now active and if I click it I've now compare all the dimensions and it'll just show the dimensions that are different. It'll show the value in each instrument, how much they've changed um, in absolute measures, in, in the unit of measure that's used, and what their percentage change is. If I had the same instrument selected in, in both views, now this compare instruments is no longer active and the menu item is no longer active. Okay, enough of that. Data entry. So how do you modify the values that are in um, this big instrument table? The tables themselves uh, act just like any should act like any spreadsheet program that you've ever ever used. You click in it and it selects the whole thing and you can type another number to replace it. So instead of 3.9 let's do 3 and then to, to register it you just click out or um, you can hit an enter key and it goes down. You can hit um, a tab key and it goes right um, and so forth so so pretty intuitive um, you've you've used that interface before um, arrow keys up and down will will move you around so data entry there is very quick if you want to just change that 7.928 to 7.828 I've double clicked it and now it's going to, to show you a long, longer number. We've, we've done some rounding. Put your cursor where you wanted um, and using your normal keys, away you go. And then it's 7.828. Um, these cells know what kind of value is supposed to be in there. Spacing is a calculated value. Um, I've selected it, but it doesn't allow me to do, I'm, I'm clicking the keys as, as we're talking, and it doesn't allow me to enter that. That's a calculated value. Uh, position is supposed to be a number. So if I instead type some letters in there, um, it'll accept them, and then it'll put a red, red box around it, and it won't allow you to leave that area. Now, if I said, oh, I didn't even mean to be there, just hit the escape key and it'll put the number back. Okay, so that's for table views. Um, for the mouthpiece parameters, um, that's not a table, and we may change this in the near future. I've, I've put a bug in on it. Um, this one, if you click in it, it doesn't select the whole thing, and you can move your cursor around and change the value. So 0.18 goes to 0.17. Um, to enter that value, you just have to click out of that cell and it becomes what it's supposed to be. So a little bit different um, interface, but, but pretty close. Um, if you enter something that's not a number, again, I'm going to do AAA and try to click out of it. Um, it just puts the original value back in. It doesn't accept invalid values um, at all. So a little bit of different handling. Um, you'll get used to it right away. So there's data entry. Um, let's close this. I, who knows what changes I've made, and then we'll just reopen it. I didn't do a save, and so I didn't corrupt that file. This program is very, very kind to you for, for making, making errors. Toolbars are manipulatable. Um, little 
They can be moved around. Uh, if you want your screen size to be different, they can be moved. Uh, they can be hidden. If I, if I don't want to see that tools menu because I always use the, the menu instead, um, I don't have to. I can bring it back by clicking there. I can get rid of the menus if I don't want to want to see them. Just little bells and whistles. And so I think this is an appropriate time to give some credit to the the organizations, the programs that uh, made a lot of this possible. If you look at the About box, um, these are programs or, or projects um, or companies that have su supported this open source effort. Apache um, is itself an open source effort and they've provided a lot of the underlying engines that we use for optimization and calculation. Dozer, a much smaller project, is the, the linking interface be, between how we save our files and how we use our files. All the pretty bells and whistles, most of the pretty bells and whistles I'm talking about today in the interface, come from the library we use from Jidesoft um, that provides that functionality. And the repository where we're hosting this program um, is, is GitHub. Again, these are all open source supporting and that's how we can provide you this software as open source and free. So just a, a little attribution for, for organizations that deserve it. Tool tips. So as, as you're aware, we don't have a whole lot of written documentation. So how do you know what things mean? Well, in some cases, we try to help you out. If you hover, oh, and you've seen tooltips in, in other applications, I'm sure. If you hover over something and there's a tooltip, well, you get this text, calculate instrument tuning table, um, draw a sketch of an instrument. Sometimes these tooltips are a little bit bit more verbose um, for this optimization. It tells you what, what the optimizer is doing. Um, so This is even a longer one. So take your time and let the, the cur cursor sit over something and see if there's a tool tip that tells you what's happening. Uh, menu items will also show those same same tool tips if they're available. Okay. Now all the fun things that you can do with Windows and this is again um, courtesy of Jidesoft. If we had written this ourselves uh, our program code which right now in, in the initial release is sitting somewhere around 80,000 lines of code it would have been five to ten times as big. Um, so we're grateful for somebody else doing some of this, this programming for us. Um, all of these data panes um, have, have wonderful support for letting you arrange things the way you want to arrange things. So first in selection, you can select them here. Sometimes, and all the time with me, I'll have a lot of files here, intermediate files. Um, you can scroll back left and right um, with these buttons. You can choose from a list a file you want to select. And you can choose from the menu files that you want to select. All oh, that's pretty wonderful. If you want to, so let's bring up a tuning file because this is my favorite for wanting to get off of the main pane. There's a tuning file and I will often, when I'm optimizing an instrument, play around with which notes I want to use in the optimization and which ones I don't by changing the weight. Um, and if I have 10 or 20 or 30 tabs up here, I don't want to go searching for it, even with a, a simple scroll down and find it in a menu. So if I go to this tab and right click it, I have some other options. Uh, the one I like is floating. It makes a new window with, with that one file. I can resize it if I want it, if I resize it, smaller than, than 
the content handles you get little scroll bars so make this as big or small as you like and then I put it somewhere where I can find it easily and manipulate it easily. I'll put it down here. If I want to compare side by side um, two files like this three quarter bore and this seven eighths inch bore, again, right clicking the, um, the tab, I can create a new vertical group. And now let's select the two instruments in each tab and I can compare them then side by side. Now I don't seem to have enough room. This um, study is in the way. So I can do a couple things, a few things with the study. I can float it and do the same thing I did with the tuning file and put it over here. Um, I often don't want to do that, so let's put it back where it was. I can hide it unless I'm using it. And now it's, it's up here, and if I want to see it, there it is, and I can click on it and bring it back. But it's not taking up space, so that's, that's cool. Let's um, stop the, the auto-hide. Um, I can get rid of it all together for now and, and none of its selections change, I just don't have to see it. I can either click this little X box or in the window menu I can say I don't want to see the study anymore. And now it's gone and I have some more space to look at these as well as I can change the screen size. Um, I want to bring that study back. I can bring it back and there it is with its same selections there. I can do the same thing with the console window. If you guys, if you don't want to see all this stream of consciousness stuff, um, you can get rid of it, you can float it, or you can auto hide it. Uh, I tend to keep it up. I like that stream of consciousness stuff. So we won't auto hide it. And if you're if you're filling this up and you're doing lots of runs and you don't want to see those values, you want to start tabla rasa. Um, you can clear that console. If I want to put this back where it was, I move it to the previous tab group. You can also create tab groups um, within. Uh, this interface as well. So if I want to put this instrument over with this tuning, so let's keep them as a match set because we might be want, wanting to run uh, different tunings with different instruments. If I do that, I, I have the same floating option, but now since I've already floated one file, now I can float it to that one. And now they're together. I think this is really kind of cool. Uh, and I can put them all, all back. So let's dock that one. And let's dock that one. And we're right, right where we started. So that's how you manipulate your um, availability, um, visual availability of the files. And uh, give yourself some room uh, to see what you want to see. These uh, split panes are also sizable. Notice that when that split pane um, doesn't give enough room for the text here to be seen, there's a, a scroll, horizontal scroll bar that shows. And if I hover over anything that doesn't fit, now it, now it shows, it extends into um, the right, so you can read it. Um, you can also change the size of that split pane. Now, currently, um, the position of these split panes is not persisted between sessions. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to change that in the future, but right now, um, be aware that, that it isn't persisted. Um, 
convenient when you're running optimizations is being able to, well, let's run an optimization. Let's run that guy. Um, it's new files are created with the name untitled one, untitled two, untitled three, and so forth. Um, that might not be very useful when you're, and when I do a, let's look at the tuning of it, it says untitled one. Well, that can be confusing very quickly. So with that selected, and I said when the Windows menu works on um, selections in the right pane, I can rename that window. And I can rename it anything I want. We're not doing a save now. It's just how it views up in that tab. And I can put 7 Ace um, Optimized. And now it shows up here. It shows up over in the study pane. It doesn't say Untitled uh, 1 anymore. And if I do a calculation, that's what comes up here. So a convenient um, utility that, again, does not get in, in the way of, uh, of saves. If I do a save, it will, or ask for a save, so this is a save as, it will put that, it'll try to put that in as, um, as the name. I had a 7-8, which is illegal in most every operating system for a file name, so it's stripped off the 7 um, slash. Uh, we're not going to save it. We, we can work, work in memory just fine. Um, many programs that you've seen um, when you go to delete this file will say, are you sure that you want to do that? Um, do you want to save it? Um, do you not want to save it or do you want to get back to the interface without doing anything horrible? We found that if we had 10 or 20 of these untitled 1 through X's, even if they're renamed, um, and we closed the program and we had never any, any intention to save them, uh, it was pretty onerous to click that, nope, I don't want to save it, I don't want to save it for all of those 20 files. So we put in a toggle. And the toggle is worn on dirty clothes. So if you select it, and now you can see that it's, it's selected. And I go to delete that file, a file that has uh, the save button active. It comes up with this nag. Um, and you can say, yes, I want to save it. Uh, no, I don't want to save it, or I want to get back to the screen. So I'm going to get back to the screen here. Um, by default, that toggle is, is not checked. And every time you open it, it won't be checked. So if you find you're making mistakes all the time, um, every time you open the program, click this button. So now if we don't have that checked, we can do the, the power user close and it, and it doesn't bother you. Okay, we're getting close here. When, when we do an optimization, you saw that a little dialog box come up and I'll do an optimization and you'll see it come up. It will come up as long as the optimizer is running. Its intent is that sometimes the optimizer will run for a long time. Uh, we don't want you to think the program's broken and not doing anything. And depending on how fast your system is and what problem you've, you've given it, that optimization may take a couple of minutes. Um, when that dialog box is up, you can't do anything on the interface. Um, you can close that dialog box and then you're in a world of hurt. So please don't close it. Just, just believe what it's saying, that the, the application um, is not, not stalled. Um, we haven't had it stall on us in, in years. So uh, believe that dialog box. That same type of dialog comes up when you do a tuning, but it comes up so quickly um, it just flashes. So uh, we have thought we've thought about 
taking it out of there, but we're also uh, in the future going to do instruments that we expect will have will take a lot longer to do the tuning calculation as well. Things like saxophones that have uh, bores that are very complex, lots of keys, um, and so forth. So it's in there for now, it just flashes on. Uh, don't kill it, and you'll find that um, when you're doing an optimization, um, you can't do anything else on the screen until it, it disappears. Okay, print and undo. And then I think we're, we're kind of done with this little walkthrough of what you can do on the user interface. Um, print is easy. We haven't implemented it. Um, at some point in the future, we may implement it, but for right now, um, if you want to, to make a copy or print out what this instrument is, um, I personally use a little, little screen capture program um, to capture a rectangle of screen. Uh, most operating systems come with such a utility, uh, so it's, it's not a big loss that you can't print it out. Um, undo. Undo is not enabled for any of the, the pretty looking um, displays. Undo is enabled for the XML displays, the text displays. Um, again, maybe in the future, uh, but since we typically use memory only files, they're easy to generate again, um, we don't feel that that's a big lack either. So undo is not is not implemented except for the XML. And like I say, be very careful in editing the XML file. The, there are no training wheels for that one. Again, if um, there are any questions or issues as you go going through this, we have an issues page that you should enter your issues and here are the the various other URLs that you may find useful the release page to get the latest release of the program um, the video tutorials with within which this video is is listed and the the wiki page which has the, the text descriptions and and tutorials on how to use the program uh, Stay tuned for additional tutorials um, on this page and have a good day.